Hey, what's up you guys? This is Thrash Till Death 555, also known as uh, David, and today we are here to do yet another CD collection update. Although, I think I probably will be doing a different type of video later on today and uploading that uh, as well. But uh, yeah, so if you guys are ready, let's go ahead and get into this CD collection update. We're going to start off with Incantation Sect of Vile Divinities. This just came out today, uh, once again, out on Relapse Records, as the previous Incantation Records uh, had been. I have gotten to listen to this already about two or three times today. It just came in, like, maybe an hour ago. I just pulled it out of the mail. So, um, but, uh, yeah, I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with this overall. I really feel like, um... You know, with anybody who follows Incantations, uh, every release that they put out, you know, they don't really have any surprises for you on here. It's just Incantation being Incantation, giving you some more just really doomy, dark, evil, uh, solid uh, death metal. You know, that's what Incantation does best, and that's what they continue to do. Um, and uh, once again, they're continuing to go into the cleaner... Uh, the cleaner direction of the production and everything. Da uh, Dan Swano is back again producing. Uh, I think he's been producing since uh, Vanquish and Vengeance, uh, if I'm not mistaken. But I will say, in comparison to Profane Nexus, which I did still really enjoy, it did make my top albums of 2017. I think I do like this a little more than Profane Nexus. The bass is a little more audible, and I just think the songs overall stand out a bit more and are a bit more memorable. But, I mean, don't get me wrong, Profane Nexus still had some really fucking awesome songs. But, uh, yeah. Uh, lots of really just cool killer riffs on here. Of course, it's Incantation. You know, in the riff department, Incantation will never disappoint. John sounds great. Love the drums as well. The drums sound great. Like, you know, it's Dan Swano's production. I, I feel like what he does a really good job with, especially with producing or mixing, mixing extreme metal, is he does a really good job of... Having a clean record not sound too clean or overproduced, you know, especially for, you know, the death metal stuff. I think he does a really good job of balancing it out between like, okay, this is clean enough, and but, you know, it doesn't sound overproduced. The guitars have plenty of crunch to them and everything, so, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I know a lot of fans continue to complain that, oh, it's not as cavernous and nasty sounding like the early stuff, and I just... But the incantation sound is definitely still there i'd um so yeah i would still urge fans of this band uh if you if you're not really keeping up with what they're doing uh still and you've kind of you know fallen out a little bit definitely check this out and this will definitely no um this will no doubt be one of the best death metal releases for 2020 and uh i definitely see it making my top albums of this year for sure but uh yeah i think that's all i have to say about the new incantation Go, go jam this. It's fucking great. If you're an Incantation fan, death metal fan, you gotta hear it. Yep. Must have. Incantation, Sect of Devile Divinities. Pretty cool artwork, too. I like the artwork. Yeah, there we go. Next up, we're gonna go to Oath of Cruelty with Summary Execution at Dawn. This is a release from last year. Uh, this is a release from Dark Descent Records. Uh, Oath of Cruelty is a, uh, a, a death thrash band from Texas, and this has the uh, guitarist and vocalist who also does PLF, which uh, I was kind of surprised to find out. I didn't find out until later after I listened to this a few times, but uh, yeah, the guy from PLF, I don't remember his name at the moment, but yeah, he is also the guitarist and vocalist on here. And as far as the other two guys, because I believe this is a three-piece, I don't remember who they are at the moment. But um, yeah, Oath of Cruelty just really um, reminiscent of that, just the best period of Death Thrash, the 90s, you know, Demolition Hammer, Morbid Saint, and the most obvious being uh, Merciless, because they do a cover of Deny Birth from Merciless's uh, The Awakening, and uh, do it very, very well uh, at that. But uh, yeah, man, just pummeling, evil-sounding Death Thrash, um, just fucking precision, deadly riffing, great double bass, and, and some blast beats thrown in there as well. Um, yeah, this is just some killer, killer uh, Death Thrash, like I said. If you're a fan of Morbid Saint, Demolition Hammer, Merciless, Numbskull, 
um, you know, uh, uh, any of that just early Death Thrash, and in my opinion, when it was still the best. Don't get me wrong, there's still some pretty cool Death Thrash coming out nowadays, but I definitely think that the 90s and the late 80s, it's, you know, that's still where it's at for Death Thrash, for me personally. But, um, yeah. Uh, Ultra Cruelty, Summary Execution at Dawn. If this release uh, missed you last year, definitely, definitely check it out because I actually did not end up checking this out until early this year. Like, I don't think I listened to this until, uh, like, January or something. And uh, I don't remember exactly. I think this came out around November. It was pretty late in 2019, and that's why, you know, I didn't really, uh, I don't know. It just passed me by. I didn't really get to it just yet. And I kind of regret it because listening to it now, I'm like, man. This should have been on the year end, uh, the year end list for 2019. But yeah, better late than never, right? So yeah, Ultra Quality with summary execution at dawn. Once again, very very cool album artwork. <clears throat> and next up, we're going to go to Sirith Ungol with King of the Dead, released in 1984. This is a Metal Blade, uh, this is a Metal Blade reissue and. Man, very, very nice packaging on this. Very, very, very cool. Um, so, yeah. Uh, if you're going to pick up a copy of King of the Dead on CD, I highly recommend this version. Fucking sounds great. But, uh, Sirith Ungle, um, I talked about their newest album, Forever Black, that came out uh, this year. But uh, this is considered by many fans to be their best, and I'm in that crowd as well. Sirith Ungle is a very, very interesting band. Um, they're... I feel like they really are an essential listen for any diehard traditional heavy metal fan. But with that being said, they're not the most accessible band in the world. Uh, they've got a very, very unique sound. Um, as I've discussed on the in the previous video, Tim Berger, Tim Burke, Tim Baker has this very, very unique voice, and that's just also very extreme for the likes of um, for traditional heavy metal. He's just kind of got this kind of like blackened sort of like howling kind of uh shrieking voice it's really hard to describe but for those uh who have listened to this band you you, you know what i'm getting at but yes sir Thungle, a very very interesting band and just not like any other traditional heavy metal band that you know they bring in a lot of doomy influences and um it's very dark uh and interesting the most interesting thing about this album even though it is an 80s release it has a very, very strong 70s uh, sound and uh, feel to it, but it's still more extreme and heavier than anything that came out in the 70s. Um, the guitars are very raw yet crunchy, and the bass and drums are very, very well executed. Um, the drums are just very, you know, um, thick and loud in the mix, and the bass as well is just clunky, thumping and just like I said very much loud in the mix as well but um yeah I feel like you know if you're a traditional heavy metal fan and you're kind of you've already got into your Black Sabbath your Judas Priest your Iron Maiden Saxon that kind of stuff and you're going to and you're starting to go more towards like the underground of traditional heavy metal I feel like this band Omen and Manila Road is kind of where you would go next after you get into the the more you know well-known stuff within traditional heavy metal but yeah it's a killer album um and yeah it's just it's an it's no surprise to me why people see this as their best killer fucking artwork as well i love this album cover um i i really want to get uh a king of the dead shirt i've got one that has like this like you know the uh this creature on it or whatever but it just has that like on the front and says Sarah Thungle on it I don't have like the full album artwork shirt I would like to get that at some point anyway rambling um some uh, really standout tracks on here to me are Finger of Scorn the title track Sarah Thungle and Master of the Pit and even the title track I would say King of the Dead I could honestly name off the whole fucking album it's just solid from beginning to end but um yeah I think I've said all that needs to be said here Sirith Ungol, King of the Dead, a fucking legendary heavy metal album, without a doubt. And next up, we're going to go to Manila Road with Open the Gates. Once again, uh, similarly to Sirith Ungol, Manila Road is also a legendary traditional heavy metal band, but 
once again, I don't see them as very being very accessible. They're very unique, and they just have they do a lot of really weird uh, things with their songs and with their production, especially. There is not a single Manila Road that sounds uh, like each other. They it's always a different sound, a different production style, and I just man, I don't see how they do it. But um, obviously, you know, as everyone knows, uh, we lost Mark Shelton back in twenty. 2018, I believe it was, and I honestly didn't really start getting more into this band until after he passed, because I remember listening to him, you know, a bit here and there, and I definitely liked what I heard, but I never really, and just, yeah, after I decided to check him out more after he passed, I became really, really obsessed with listening to this band, um, although that was quite a while later. I would say I didn't really start getting deep into this band until sometime uh probably like last year so i've been i've been listening to these guys for several months now and i'm still pretty stuck on their music open the gates is my favorite by them uh this is released in 1984 this is released on uh golden core uh records uh some a label that i'm not really familiar with but um yeah this is my favorite of the manila road albums and this is also probably one of my all-time favorite heavy metal albums from the 1980s in general. But uh, just Mark Shelton's guitar work is fantastic, as everyone knows, and the rest of the band's are great as well. Randy Fox's drumming is fucking awesome. Um, just lots of some speedy kind of stuff, you know, uh, bringing in, there's a lot of power metal influence to this album, uh, kind of where they started bringing it in at the uh, in their career, I would say. Um, Let's see. But yeah, just so many good songs on here. Witches Brew, you know, Road of Kings, The Ninth Wave, Heavy Metal to the World. Once again, this is one where I could probably just name off the whole fucking album and say that every track is a standout. But yeah, this album's amazing. Um, yeah, Manila Road, man. Uh, definitely, definitely one of the treasures of traditional heavy metal. If you have not checked out Manila Road yet, I highly highly recommend that you do so because you are missing out otherwise once again awesome artwork <laughs> and i just put that together backwards and moving on we are going to go to manila road again with the deluge i believe that these are all remasters by the way um yeah this is also a golden core records release so after Open the Gates, they kind of start to drop the power metal influence maybe a little bit and focus more, they go for a darker sound on this, I would say, and once again, a production and sound that's very, very different and sounds nothing like Open the Gates. But uh, yeah, just definitely goes into darker, some darker territory. Um, you know, a lot of um, what people consider to be the best of Manila Road, as it's known as the Manila 4, it's Crystal Logic, Open the Gates, This, The Deluge, and Mystification. Those seem to be the most popular favorites among the Manila Road fan base. And uh, as I said, Open the Gates is my favorite. And I'm kind of in that crowd as well. I would say that those first four are probably the band's best. But I'm also a really big fan of uh, Spiral Castle and Voyager uh, later in the 2000s. I love those albums as well. It, those two are probably tied for being my favorite of Manila Road in the 2000s but um so yeah back to the deluge just like i said a pretty different vibe darker sound um maybe a little more um maybe a little more bass heavy uh i guess you could say um still the genius guitar work of mark shelton is just as present as ever and and great riffs especially the solos god i feel like i could just listen to mark solo for just hours and just never fucking get tired of it it's amazing how he constructs his solos it's so good but um some of my favorite tracks from the deluge i would say hammer the witches and uh uh divine victim yeah oh and of course the very very dark closing track ep dark epic closing track the deluge can't forget that one but uh yeah manila road the deluge
Why is shit always gotta be falling out? Okay. We got one more to go. And it is mystification. Uh, so yeah, right after the deluge, once again, takes a different uh, direction. Uh, so this is released on Sentinel Steel. So yeah, that's what this is on. Um, once again, this is a, another remaster. Um, I really like the lyrical content that these this album focus on. There's a lot of really cool songs about like uh, based on Edgar Allan Poe stuff and you know that kind of stuff. So that's that was really cool to me because it's pretty like horror based. So yeah. And even, you know, Haunted Palace and uh, Mask of the Red Death, you know, those are like horror, uh, there's horror films that are based on those stories that Vincent Price starred in. So that's really, really cool. But anyway, to the music, Mystification, basically what I would describe this as, they take their epic, their already established epic heavy metal sound and they put some thrash influence to it. Um, this is a very, very thrashy album. A lot of fast songs on here, although there's still plenty of cool tempo changes, and I'm not gonna, it's definitely not just fast um, all the way through. But once again, just has that really just kind of hypnotic quality within the just the instrumentation, and just, it's just a really, another really, really cool album from Manila Road. Um, uh, let's see, is there anything else I can think of to say? No. As I said, you know, um, it's it's a completely different sound of production. Like I said, Manila Road never repeat themselves in terms of what their albums sound like. Every single album, it always sounded different. And uh, as you, unfortunately, as you can see, I'm not showing this video. I don't own Crystal Logic yet, but I do hope to pick that up at some point. But uh, yeah, I think that's gonna do it for my thoughts on Mystification. This album is fucking awesome as well. So yeah. Manila Road Mystification. Killer shit, killer band. As I said, if you are a traditional heavy metal fan and you have not listened to Manila Road yet, definitely do so. And as I, I'm mentioning the other two bands as well, Omen, Sirith Engel, like I said, that is just some of the best of the best underground traditional heavy metal and some of the best in general of all time, in my opinion. Just unfortunately... They just don't really, you know, get the same attention as Maiden, Sabbath, and Priest. And I, I feel like that's very unfortunate because they definitely deserve so. So, yeah. That's going to do it for this video. And like I said, I will probably be uploading the next one later on tonight at some point, And we will be discussing a different topic. So you'll have to find out what that is when I upload it. But yeah, everyone take care. Have a good one. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.